Adventure stories like Treasure Island, Tom Sawyer, Finian's Rainbow, Indiana Jones, capture the, the imagination of generation after generation. Buried treasure and cryptic clues and villains and danger and swashbuckling courageous heroes. And whether the treasure is the Holy Grail or a pot of gold, most of us relish such stories different from the ordinariness of our lives. The gospel is shock full of parables. They're stories teaching us to search for hidden treasure, the reign of God. The parables are clues inviting us to probe them, open them, so that we will discover the richness of God's self-revelation. The kingdom of heaven, wherever the presence of God is uncovered, in Jesus, in our experience, whenever the values and the way of the life of this Jesus is followed. So Jesus invites why the kingdom of heaven is like a pearl of great price. And a merchant seeks it, and when he finds it, he sells all that he has, and he buys that pearl. First, there must be the quest, the search for meaning. The pearl? Jesus, who he is, the gift of God, Lord and Savior. Jesus self-defined as the servant who gives himself. The pearl is hidden because all who search are faced with different options for understanding and responding to life. For some in our society, the slogan is, get what you can and keep it. And for others, there's an impatient, who knows, who cares? Just live in joy. But led by the Spirit, the believer is the one who finds in Jesus hidden treasure. St. Paul put it beautifully in the letter to the Corinthians. He said, for God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, God has shone in our hearts that we in turn might make known the glory of God shining on the face of Christ Jesus. The glory of God shining on the face of Christ Jesus. When we were youngsters, we were given words about this Jesus. We memorized them. But later, when we faced life with all its complexities, words needed to be changed into understanding and into convictions. To live by faith, we need to retool our minds so that we probe the mystery of Christ. One of us yet uniquely God's Son. Come, Jesus invites, come, follow me. And he leads us and guides us week after week as we grapple with who he is and how he enlightens us to see the way he connects God to life. And when we finally say, I believe, with a willingness to let his light lead us, then we have discovered the pearl of great price. The pearl is not a thing. It's a conviction. It's something alive. It wiggles and squirms, and we never quite capture it. Like life, to which the conviction connects, there is an ebb and the flow. And sometimes we wonder, and sometimes we might doubt. And if the conviction relates to Jesus, it's also about ourselves, who we are, beyond what appears. We are children of God. God lives in us. And we have a mission. We are to make known the glory of God shining on the face of Christ Jesus. And how do we do that? By mirroring His way in our ways. Facing issues of our personal and public lives with His wisdom, all the concerns of life are to be filtered through the way of this Jesus. War, poverty in the midst of affluence, concern for unborn life, 
Sex, not as a plaything, but as something holy, a treasure. Power, not used for control and dominance, but for service. All of these things need to be filtered through Jesus. And if the kingdom, the presence of God, is buried, often paradoxically, it's in plain sight. The extraordinary hidden in the ordinary, in the laughter of children, in the consoling words of a friend, in the rapture of a newly married couple, in the satisfaction one finds in the midst of one's work, in the hospitality of an acquaintance, in the beauty of a sunset, in coming to an insight, revealing the depth of understanding and truth that we didn't have before. So if we probe and wonder and listen to life, and to Jesus, we uncover the pearl of great price, the abiding presence of God. And so we pause and we give thanks and we rejoice. But not all is up, up and away in our lives. And to those inevitable disheartening sorrows and pains of life, whatever the source, we believers connect them to the cross of Christ. Nothing is wasted. All works out for good to those who love God. In our first reading today, Solomon asked the Lord, give your servant an understanding heart. An understanding heart, that means many different things. But certainly it means to have the wisdom to see the hidden presence of God in the disadvantage of the world, in whatever way they may be disadvantaged and to respond in whatever way we can to bring life and to bring hope. You know, we are the halves of this world, however we may be cataloged, middle class, upper middle class, wealthy. We have health insurance, and we have 4K1s, or whatever they call that. <laughs> and we have pensions, and if you're as old as I am, you collect Social Security for many years. We are the privileged of this world. And in addition to that, most of us have been privileged by a way of family and education and opportunities. It is our privilege to follow the way of Jesus, the servant, to recognize and respond to the treasure, the presence of God, so easily overlooked in the have-nots of the world. This is the gift Jesus is trying to give us in these parables. The treasure map we need to find the true treasure of life, which brings joy now and fullness in the eternity of God.